and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we get another gift from the Adobe gods, this time in the form of Adobe Premiere Pro 2021, chock full of new goodies and exciting tools for all you editors out there. Now, earlier this week, I dropped a video about multi-frame rendering inside of After Effects Beta, which is still very exciting stuff. But today's video is gonna be all about Adobe Premiere. I'm gonna focus on a couple really key important things, and we're gonna glance over a few others, like all these bug fixes. They also made some updates to team projects. They also did some stuff with languages, but today I'm just gonna focus on the ones that are gonna impact you guys the most because there are a couple big ones. I'm very excited, you're very excited. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? Click on that subscribe button, click on that thumbs up button, drop a comment in the comment section below because we are getting started right now. All right guys, Adobe Premiere Pro 2021 is open and down here in my timeline, I've got a video, but also you might be looking at this video of my dog Goji. Which one should we do first? Uh, let's go with Goji. So here is a 4K clip of my dog and I intentionally made it really shaky at the beginning because we are going to talk about the newly renovated warp stabilizer, which is a lot faster in the new version of Premiere. So I've dragged and dropped that clip onto my timeline. It is a 4K timeline at 23976 and this is really shaky. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to effect type in warp stabilizer and drop distort warp stabilizer on that clip come over here to effect controls and you guys can see that it is moving very quickly and for those of you that have used warp stabilizer in the past you know how slow and kind of like annoying it is to work with and they've made some significant speed improvements in warp stabilizer and look at how good it looks look at how good it looks for how shaky it was let's turn it off this is how shaky it was okay at the beginning like that's that's garbage. That looks like crap. But with Warp Stabilizer, it actually did a really, really good job of stabilizing that extremely shaky footage. So I don't know if they've done something in the back end to the ones and zeros to make Warp Stabilizer work better, but it certainly does work faster. So that's gonna be a big improvement for those of you out there that are used to stabilizing footage, especially working in a 4K workflow when you literally have to drag and drop and then sit and wait and it takes forever. Thank you, Adobe, for making this faster. I don't know if you've made it better as well, but it definitely seems like it's better. Uh, and I'm really excited about that. So that is the first big improvement in Adobe Premiere Pro 2021. Now let's get back to the timeline. I know you were curious. So over here on my timeline, I've got this cheeky little video for you. Oh, hey there, didn't expect to see you in this caption example video actually actually i did and we're gonna we're gonna make some captions it's gonna be great yes we are gonna make some captions and it is gonna be great and for those of you that have ever had to use the old caption workflow in adobe premiere a moment of silence i'm sorry I'm really sorry if you've ever had to make captions because it was it was genuinely pretty awful, but it's not awful anymore. It's actually really fun to make captions. I was having fun at least, and I'm gonna show you guys also a little sneak peek at what Adobe has coming up for the caption workflow. I have a pre-release of the speech to text workflow inside of Premiere for captions, and it's really, really amazing. So I'm gonna show you guys that. Unfortunately, it is not publicly available, but in this video, you are gonna get a sneak peek, and I'm excited for you when it does come out. But the whole captions workflow is completely change. We're going to have some fun. Let's dive into it right now. So I've got this video right here that I want to do captions on and come right up here to this captions workspace. Click on that. Everything changes. And you have a couple different options over here on the left-hand side. This first one, transcribe sequence, is something that we're going to go over later. That's something that you might not have because that's the secret thing that I do have, but we're going to go over it and you're going to get really excited about it, but not right now. So the things that you do have, create new caption track and import captions from file. So we're going to choose create new caption track and it will give you a couple different options. The format Format, which you can pick anything from this list, but for this tutorial, we are going to do subtitle and style. Currently, there is no styling. We are going to make our own style and you'll be able to select one later. So for right now, click none and click OK and look at right up here at the top of your timeline. It has created a subtitle track above all of your video tracks as kind of a separate entity, which is really, really nice. And so we're going to come right up here into the text tab up in the top left hand corner and we're going to click on this plus button that says add new caption segment. And when you click on that, it gives you a layer like you're used to seeing in Adobe Premiere already. This is a layer, right? You're used to using it a certain way. Now this is a layer. You can shorten it, you can lengthen it, and it works exactly like how everything works inside of Premiere. And it's not like a clunky, stupid workflow anymore, which is amazing. So what you're gonna do is input your captions. Oh, hey there, didn't expect to see you. All right, so I'm gonna type in, oh, hey there, didn't expect to see you. 
And that is our first caption. Now, first and foremost, this text is garbage. So let's go over here and let's change it to something else. I personally have been on a Franklin Gothic kick recently, if you must know. So Franklin Gothic medium, you can do all the formatting options. You can do uh, forced caps, all that stuff right here, like you're used to seeing. You can set the zone for your captions with this little grid right here, which is kind of nice. And you have the appearance stuff down here. Fill and shadow are already default on, and you can kind of turn down the drop shadow a little bit. You can turn the angle of the drop shadow down. You can make it farther away from the text. You can make it softer, etc. So kind of do whatever you want to do, make it however you want to make it. And once you're done, you're going to come up to track style where it says none. And we're going to create a style. I'm going to call this simple sub and then click. Okay. And now that will make a style that I could call up later when I'm doing my subtitles. So styling looks good. First caption looks good. Let's add another one. Why can't I click on the button? Oh, because Adobe people are smart and they don't let you add a caption over an existing caption. So to make a new caption, click anywhere where there isn't an existing caption already. Now you can click the new caption button. So we put in our text and I'm just gonna trim my layers back. You in there we go. And now say, for example, I wanted to split this into two captions. There is a very convenient button for that, which is right here, a uh, split segment, which will split your caption, you guessed it, into two different segments. And say, I just want this first one to be everything before actually. And the second one, I want to be just actually, just like that. Now it is split it right down the middle and I can just time this accordingly, like I'm used to doing with everything else in Premiere. Video actually. <laughs> There we go. In this caption example video, actually, and now everything is looking really good. And say I wanted to combine these two back together because I actually preferred one title instead of two. Very simply, I can control click on the two that I want to merge and then just merge the segments together right here. So now let's say I have done all of my captions for my video and I am ready to export it to an SRT file, which is a subrip text file, subrip templates. Uh, it's the thing that you use as a text document with time code in it, SRT. So I'm gonna export this to an SRT by hitting these three buttons right here, going to export to SRT file, call it something good. Obviously don't call it something good and hit save. And now ladies and gentlemen, we can do something very simple. If somebody sends you an SRT file, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this track right here, right clicking and then delete. Uh, we can choose import captions from file and then we are going to go and grab that file, somethinggood.srt, click open. And then it will ask you a couple questions. Uh, what format do you want it in? Again, you can change your format here, subtitles fine. And what style do you want it in? We already made a style, which is great. So I'm gonna choose simple sub and we're gonna do source time code, click okay. And now it will layer in those captions that we made with exact time code on a subtitle track and everything is looking really, really nice. If we delete the track out of here, you can also drag and drop that SRT file directly onto your timeline and it will give you the exact same options. We can choose our styling and then we have our captions, which is amazing. And now the last thing I wanna show you with regards to captions is the transcribe sequence setting. Now, again, you guys won't have this. It's gonna be available later to you. I'm just special because I have an Adobe Premiere pillow back there. And that's why I have this. All right, so let's click on transcribe sequence and I'm gonna choose my audio track from audio one because that's where I'm talking on audio one and the language as English, as you can see, it will support a bunch of different languages, but uh, English is the one we're gonna use because that's all I know how to speak. And then we're gonna click transcribe. Up here, it is creating the auto transcription. It is transcribing the sequence. It is processing. And then once it's done processing, we should have a transcript that we can turn into captions. And it looks like it is about done. Uh, let's see how it did. Oh, hey there, didn't expect to see you in this caption example video. Actually, actually I did. And we're going to make some captions. It's going to be great. All right, this did a really surprisingly good job. Uh, not with the punctuation though, but with the actual words themselves, this did a really good job. So all I'm gonna do is just clean this up a little bit. Get rid of some of the punctuation in this caption. And now we have a transcript is already, you know, kind of giving me a name speaker one. You can click on that and you can edit the speakers. You can put people's names in. you could add multiple speakers. Uh, but for now, speaker one is totally fine. And now I'm gonna click create captions. And again, subtitle and style, simple sub, click okay. And it's gonna put it on that subtitle track at the top of my sequence. And let's see if it got it right. Oh, hey there, didn't expect to see you in this caption example video actually actually i did and we're gonna we're gonna make some captions it's gonna be great <laughs> it did a really really good job obviously you can see there's like one frame in here that isn't quite right 
this caption over here can maybe be cleaned up a little bit. But in theory, this saves a lot of time for those of you that are trying to do transcriptions and subtitles, and then you can take all of those files, export it to an SRT, upload it to YouTube, and have subtitles for your YouTube videos without doing too much work. So this new caption workflow is, uh, maybe it seems like not exciting on the surface, but it actually is very exciting for those of you that have tried to use this in the past. And this is something that I'm super excited about and I will absolutely use for all of you out there that are asking me to subtitle my videos. I'm gonna use this from now on and we'll see how it goes, but it's gonna save me a lot of time, which is super exciting. What else is super exciting? Oh, let me tell you, the ability to replace media in a .mogart file from After Effects inside of Premiere. Now we finally have the option to drag and drop new media into motion graphics templates, which is super exciting. So let me demo that for you right now. I'm gonna delete this subtitle track out of here. Get out of here. I'm actually gonna delete this. Get out of here. I'm gonna go back to my editing workflow. Actually, I'm gonna to go to my library workflow because I already have a graphic that I made for this. So I'm gonna drag and drop that onto my timeline. And here we have a nice picture of a palm tree and it says your text goes right here. So we're gonna change that by going over to the graphics tab so we can edit everything inside of this graphic. So I'm gonna edit the text and have it say something else. I'm gonna change the color have it say something else. I have another tutorial on my channel. I will drop a card at the top of the screen for how to create a Mogart file. But the newness is right here, the media replacement. So I want to replace this image of a palm tree with this image of footsteps in the sand. So I'm just gonna very simply drag and drop this media onto this picture of a palm tree and it will replace the media inside of my composition. So now Mogart files are completely customizable with the media that you have in there. And this is great if you're just like doing a news show and you constantly need the graphics to be coming in and you need to replace media. And this is valuable for a lot of different reasons. And it's really cool because it works with both photos and video as well. So if you have a video like I do right here, queued up almost as if I was ready for this moment, I can drag and drop it right onto that image and replace the media. And now it's putting in one of my YouTube videos into this placeholder and you can adjust the time code right down here. So you can kind of make it start wherever. Um, very, very useful tool, but I'm gonna have it start at the beginning. And of course, uh, you know, if you do this right and you do protected regions and everything, you can make this as long or as short as you want. Again, I have another tutorial on my channel on how to do this, but the fact that we can drag and drop and replace media inside of Mogart files, so excited. And then the last major thing that I wanna mention is the ability to copy and paste audio effects from your audio track mixer onto other tracks and the introduction of pre-fader and post-fader options for your audio. That might be kind of confusing to some of you, but I'm gonna demo it, so don't worry about it. Let's jump in. Let's go to the audio track mixer, and I'm just gonna start dropping a bunch of different effects on here. Now, obviously, that I would never do something like this for my own projects, but I'm just gonna demo the fact that we can copy and paste these over from one track to another. Now, before, you used to have to like hold down Alt and click and drag, and you could copy over, but that's not, if you have a bunch of stuff on one audio track, that's annoying to have to deal with. Now, we can right click, and we can come to copy track effects, and then, of course, we can paste the track effects onto other channels. So that is very, very helpful for those of you that are doing some pretty intense audio mixing. I know not a lot of you do, but that is a nice addition to Adobe Premiere. The other thing is, is if I right click, you can see pre-fader and post-fader. Now these options are kind of reserved for people who do audio more, but it's still good to understand. Pre-fader is basically using effects that are happening on the track, regardless of the fader on the track. Now it's a little bit confusing because you have to use the track volume mixer and not the clip volume mixer. And the best way that I can demo this is with an audio sample and a delay so you can kind of see the difference between the two. So let's jump in, let's get that set up. Can we go now? Go now. So you can hear the delay is picking up the entire phrase, can we go now? Now pre-fader and post-fader only really deals with audio effects and it's what's going into those effects before it comes out into the master channel. So pre-fader, no matter where your volume is at on the track side, will allow it to bypass volume and still get the entire effect on the clip. So let's demo that now. I'm gonna make this audio track just a little bit bigger and I'm gonna switch this over to track keyframes and track volume, which is actually going to control the volume of the track, not the volume volume of the clip, which you guys are used to doing. So I'm actually gonna put a fade on this entire track, just like so. You would think that only the last part of this phrase would be you know, running through the delay. But if I right click on here and go to pre-fader, you'll see that nothing will really change from the first time we demoed it. Go now. Go now. You can still hear the whole phrase, can we go now, because it's bypassing the fader, which is pre-fader. So this volume actually doesn't matter for the effect. Now, if we switch it over to post-fader, all we'll hear is the delay for the last half of the sentence. Go now. Go now. 
it's only grabbing the last half and it's actually using this fader to run through the effect. So that's the pre-fader, post-fader in a nutshell. I know that might be slightly confusing for some of you, but for some of us that like this kind of stuff, that was never an option before and it's an option now and I am a happy camper. And the very last thing that I wanna go over, which wasn't in any notes, it wasn't in any release notes in Adobe Premiere, it just kind of like appeared there and it's great, is the quick export button right up here in the top right-hand corner, this little arrow, quick export. You click on that and you can save yourself a little preset of just quickly exporting something. So you can come down here, you can choose your settings, and then you don't have to deal with this whole nonsense of like hitting control M and then this coming up and you have to like set all these settings and there's a bazillion different tabs. You no longer have to deal with this if you just want to do a quick export. So like quick export, cool. I'm going to go high quality 1080 HD. You tell it where to save, you hit export and that's it. No longer having to deal with the export queue, the render queue, media encoder. It's just a little quick export button. And that wasn't even any release notes. Why? It's so nice and handy up there in the top right corner. Well, th that's it for today's video. This probably was a very long video. I'm very excited about all the new features that are in Adobe Premiere 2021. I hope you guys are also excited. If you're excited about anything, drop a comment in the comment section below, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let me know what you are specifically excited about. I'm excited about all of it. You can't use my answer. Come up with your own answer. Well, that's it guys. That does it for me and for this video today. I really hope that you enjoyed my enthusiasm about the new Adobe Premiere update. There are links in the video description below to all sorts of stuff, including a Linktree link, which will give you access to my social media if you want to follow me, all the tutorial downloads that I've done in previous tutorials, links to support you, links to support me, Epidemic Sound Free Trial, Invato Elements, 70% off. There's a bunch of good stuff down there that I truly care about that I want to give to you guys. So go and explore all that stuff. Smash the like button, subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.